This is Chuck Schaefer of Customer.tv, and I am again joined by Paul Greenberg, president of the 56 Group, blogger at P. Green Blog and ZDNet's Social CRM, and author of the best-selling CRM at the Speed of Light. The purpose of our discussion today is to explore Social CRM, as well as its links to traditional CRM and customer experience management. Welcome, Paul, and thank you for joining me. How are you today? I'm great today, too. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, for the, the business that operates a company-centric operational business model, but knows they have to make the transition to a customer-centric model or risk losing their customers to competitors that do, how do you recommend they get started? Well, I, I guess the sort of biggest question is how much they actually know that, right? I mean, you know, when I say that, no sometimes means lip service, and, you know, no sometimes means, okay, we're willing to actually seriously invest in this. Well, that's actually rare. So, assuming it's somewhere in between for the moment, um, you do small things to start, right? Now, with some recognition. I, look, the key is this. The fundamental transition always has to occur in the culture of a company to be customer-centric. It's not... It's not the automation, it's not the processes, although they're part of it, certainly. It's not the technology, it's not even the strategy of the programs, it's the culture. If the company's culture supports customer-centric activity, um, you know, the, the rest of it will occur and continue to occur. And I, it's not automatically, you still have to work at it. But the rest of it will be supported and continue to be supported so that it doesn't just, you make an attempt, it works, it doesn't work, and it goes away, and that's the end of it, your attempt. All right, so two things have to happen. One is you find, and, like, and this is a fairly traditional way of looking at it, but you find the smaller things that you can engage in to actually prove your point, and, and at the same time will be, again, the little win-wins that we always used to talk about. But there's, there's two benefits to that. One is, you know, you actually get a win, you know, that actually has a direct business benefit, and two is, people, more people buy into the concept. So maybe you develop a, use a social channel to listen to your customers and respond to them in some way on those social channels. Now people say, well, you know, because the, the cost of entry and the cost of failure is cheap. However, however, the one thing people forget is the cost of success is expensive, <laughs> right? Once you do this and if you succeed at it, you only grow and you grow exponentially on this one because there's more and more people who start being driven to the channels where they see success with their relationship to a company. You can do something more traditional, you know, which is implemented for a sales team in a, in a department or, you know, do on the technology side or you could or you could develop a one program, you know, that will impact your customers in on the loyalty side of things that will involve some of these new social CRM approaches because you understand that that's how they want to be engaged. You want to do a really simple thing? Create a customer advisory board and ask them what they want. First and foremost, every company should have one. That's, that's actually the least expensive thing you can do to start this and you will be shocked to hear what the customers have to tell you. Companies presume all the time for their customers and they shouldn't. So, though, let's say if I had to pick one thing to get started in developing a customer centric culture is create a customer advisory board and then ask the customers what they want. Doesn't mean you have to give them everything, just ask them what they want. Make them your trusted advisors. Let me see if I can pick up on a couple things you said there and, and maybe sort of see if there's a bridge between social CRM and customer experience. How does customer experience complement, contrast, or otherwise rationalized with customer relationship management and social CRM? I'll give you an example I often use when I speak, which really points it out. Because a lot of people say, well, you know, some of this is just providing them with stuff like discounts. And, and I said, that's emotional too. I'll give you a perfect example. All right, so you get an email on January 1. It says, you have been a wonderful customer for us. You have been one of our favorites. We really like you. As a result of that, we're going to give you 20% off any item in the entire catalog you want this month. And you get this email 
January, February, March, April, May, and June. You get six straight months. July, you don't get the email. So when July 1 comes, you're sorry you're not getting it, but you feel really great. You know, I mean, you really like this company. They just gave you six months, 20% off because you're just such an invaluable customer to them, and you really feel valued. All right, January 1, again, you get an email that says, look, you are a royal pain in the ass. And uh, frankly, we don't really want to talk to you, but I'll tell you what, if you don't talk to us, we'll give you 30% off anything in our catalog, whatever, anything you want. In fact, we'll give you 40%, right? Just don't talk to us. So if you're into S&M, over the next six months, you take 40% off, you never call them, and you feel pretty bad, but <laughs> you know, every time you're getting the same email after six months, July 1, are you still a customer of that company when it doesn't come? No, of course not. You know, you know, the reality is they made you feel like crap. And that's exactly what it is. Even though you got a much bigger discount, they made you feel like crap. And all you really want as a customer is to feel valued in some way, however that manifests. It could manifest by a thank you. It could manifest by a shout out. It could manifest by a, a discount. You know, depends always, of course. The value of the social CRM side of this is providing the capability to give you that value. That is what engages you and keeps you there. A good social CRM strategy allows the customer the control of how they engage. Paul, if we look forward, how do you envision customer experience management will evolve over the next few years? Okay. Uh, first, I just need to clarify something, uh, and this is mostly for technology vendors who might be listening into this. Mm -hmm. Customer experience management is not a market. Okay, just want to tell them that now. This is not a market. It's not where you, you're not going to sell software in a customer experience management market. Even though there are solutions that call themselves that, ultimately they're just versions of CRM one way or the other. Um, there's no reason to try to create a market that's not there. Now that said. It is a program and it is a management science and it's been one for longer than there's even been a CRM. It's been around for 60 some odd years. There are groups like, uh, what is it called, uh, Chesky, I think. Chesky Associates who have written not very good books, but books on it. Customer experience, it, the, the genie's out of the bottle again. Uh, now it'll probably stay out of the bottle. It's not going to go back in this time. There's a third of three wishes, okay? So that, that's, this is it. Um, I think it's going to, just as social CRMs become a mainstream strategy, customer experience will remain, now that it's out of the bottle, a primary focus of companies. Now, is it that now? No, not yet. It's getting there. You know, more and more companies are, are associating with it. The idea, more and more companies are understanding it's the core of what the customer's engagement with you is all about anyway. Uh, more and more companies are looking at behavior from a technology standpoint. A lot of companies are seeing on the analytics side the sentiment analysis has to be more sophisticated than positive, negative, and neutral. You know, I mean, they're starting to look at things that will allow them to understand human behaviors more in, in a business environment more and predict those behaviors as best they can and then develop the programs to encapsulate what the customers need to maintain and continue those engagements because ultimately they feel good about the company that they're involved with. The fundamental principle of CRM is now the primary one, which is if a customer likes you and continues to like you, they will continue to do business with you. And if they don't, they won't. And that's pretty much the way it works. I mean, again, it's not quite that simple, but that is the fundamental. And that's customer experience. That's all it's about. So we're not dealing with anything fundamentally new. What we are dealing with is something that now is out of the bottle and will stay out of the bottle. Very interesting points indeed. And with that, we're at a good break point to conclude our conversation. This is Chuck Schaefer, and I've been joined by Paul Greenberg. Paul, thank you for your comments and insights, and thanks for joining me today. Anytime, my friend, anytime. <laughs>